Hello friends, this video on organisms and population part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we are talking about soil, it becomes very important to talk about some of the important properties of soil that is like percolation rate of water. So what is percolation rate of water? It is the amount of water percolated per unit time. So what is the meaning of percolated? Have you ever wa watered a plant? If no, try doing this. So when you water a plant, what do you observe? Now let's say that you put 100 milliliter of water in this flower pot. Okay. Now observe and try to see how much time it takes for all the water to get seeped down. I mean, so that it can take a small pot so that 100 ml water when you put it initially the water is visible from above it remains on the surface of the soil but after a couple of seconds or after a couple of minutes you will see that the water is like it went inside so you cannot see any water on the surface of the soil so where did the water go it's not a magic the water basically percolated into the soil so through the empty spaces between the soil particles the water went down so the water was seeped down so this is known as percolation and how much water is percolated per unit time that is known as percolation rate of water so how do we calculate percolation rate of water it is the amount of water which percolated so generally we measure it in milliliters like in this case I told 100 milliliter and the percolation time that means the time it took for the for all the water to get seeped down so maybe that is 10 minutes so it is measured in milliliter per minute now again the percolation rate for different types of soil would be different like loamy soil, sandy soil and clay soil all of them would have different percolation rates of water. Now why do we want to know that uh, you know how much is the percolation rate of which type of soil. So that's because now how do we decide that which type of soil is best for a particular plant. So with the help of these properties so if we have if we want to plant a tree which needs which wants more and more water to go deep inside so in that case we need to choose a soil which has a very high percolation rate of water so that way these kind of properties help us to take the right decision so a soil with more percolation rate will hold water for a longer time but that does not mean that it will hold more amount of water because the water is basically seeping down but it uh, knowing the percolation rate would help us to decide the crop suitable to be grown on that particular soil. So let us look at the percolation rate in different types of soil. So the rate of percolation would depend on the soil composition and therefore it is different in different types of soil. So in sandy soil, the percolation rate is the fastest. Do you know why? Because the empty spaces here is maximum because it has more number of big particles. So the spaces are also big and through those big spaces water quickly goes deep inside. So it has the water passes quickly through the spaces and therefore it has fastest percolation rate and the percolation rate is the slowest in case of clay soil and that is because here the empty spaces are extremely tiny and it is intermediate for loamy soil so knowing this we can decide which type of soil can be used for a specific crop now please do not get confused because i told you before that sandy soil holds minimum amount of water okay but now i am saying that it has maximum percolation rate so both are two different things holding how much amount of water it will hold that you can look at this picture and predict. So you see here, so this soil holds more amount of water. So even within this much depth, so much of water is present. So it is able to hold more water. But here, more it is able to allow more water to pass through it. That means it is not able to hold the water. Water is just passing down. So it is not, this type of soil doesn't hold good amount of water, but it allows water to pass through it very quickly. Whereas in case of clay soil, it holds more, I and mean, a huge amount of water and it doesn't allow it to go deep down. So that's the difference between the two properties. So the next property that we consider in case of soil is water absorption. 
So here again, if you look at the three types of soil, sandy, loamy and clayey, what do you observe? It is just the opposite in this case. In this case, water absorption is maximum in case of clayey soil because the here more amount of water is held by the soil. Therefore, the soil particles will actually tend to absorb more and more water. Here, the water absorption would be minimum because the water is quickly just draining through the soil. It is quickly just passing through the empty spaces of the soil. So the soil particles are not holding any water and that is why sandy soils are very dry whereas clayey soils are very wet and the loamy soils they are like intermediate between the two. Now when we consider the various factors which affect the soil like the soil at different regions are different. In some areas the soil is very dry, in some areas the soil is very wet. So there are certain factors which affect the soil quality like temperature, rainfall, wind, humidity, light. So all these factors together affect the quality of soil. So let me give you an example. Now if there is too much of rainfall in a particular area, what happens to the soil? So that water is actually going to the soil which makes the soil wet, which which to some extent changes the composition of the soil. Not the composition exactly but at least the property of the soil. Again let's say that there is no rainfall for a couple of months what happens the soil tends to become dry now even if it is clay soil it needs water it, it has the ability to retain water it has the ability to absorb water but that water has to come here either through rainfall or through irrigation but if there is no water coming to the soil what will happen the soil will become dry Similarly, if the temperature is very high, again a lot of water will start evaporating from the soil which can make the soil dry. So humidity, wind, light, all of these directly or indirectly affect the properties of soil. Now, there is a very close relationship between soil and crops. So different crops need different types of soil for their growth. For example, if we talk about cereals like wheat, it grows best on clay or loamy soils so that they are like the ideal type of soil clay or loamy anyways loamy soil is like suitable for most of the plants or crops you talk about rice now rice you would have, if you have ever come across a paddy field you would have seen that it needs a lot of water in fact the fields are kind of water clogged so rice is grows best on clayey soil because clayey soil holds the maximum amount of water so if we mix little bit of organic matter on with the clayey soil so that becomes the best soil type for the growth of rice you talk about plants like the cotton plant so they again grow best on sandy soil as well as loamy soil so they do not need too much of water to be retained so it needs less to moderate amount of water so sandy or loamy would be best you talk about the pulses whether the lentils or the urad dal so all these pulses they grow well in well drained loamy soils so the loamy soils would be best for all types of pulses. So that means you, if you look at different types of plants, all of them would have different requirements. Now why do the plants, why do the crops have different requirements? That because, that's because different soils have different composition, different pH, different water content, different mineral content, etc. And such needs might be different for different crops. So therefore, uh, plants need different soil types for their growth. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.